Hello everyone, this is James Shore with a recap of episodes 41 through 50 of my Test Driven Development video series. What you're seeing here is episodes 41 through 50 of my series at 10 times speed. So you're getting to see this uh, about in 15 minutes, you're seeing 10 episodes of 15 minutes each. And what I'm working on in these first couple of episodes is focused on finishing up getting the code to work just like my spreadsheet does. Uh, there was a lot of problems with that. If you watch the videos, uh, if you watch 31 through 40, you, you heard about that. A lot of trouble getting the code to do the calculations exactly the same way that the spreadsheet did. And at this point in the series, I'm wrapping that up. I've got it mostly working, and now I'm just programming the code to sell a certain amount of uh, stocks every year and comparing that to the spreadsheet, which does the same thing. Once I had that coded, I actually had a surprising amount of difficulty getting it to work, just like the spreadsheet. Most of it was just small little things, uh, just trying to figure out exactly what it meant and um, how everything fit together. And here you can see me desk checking my work to make sure it matched up. And uh, at this point, it looks like it did. So I was done. And so the next thing I worked on was trying to get the UI look and feel really polished. And that's, that's what I'm continuing to work on today uh, in episodes past episode 50. Uh, just getting this all cleaned up, getting it to be uh, really polished. What you're seeing right now is actually some cleanup of the um, of the classes that were related to that code. But now in this episode, I'm starting to do the actual polish. And because I didn't know how to do testing of the UI, I actually went and worked on some spike code. The first thing I looked at was a framework by Llewellyn Falco and another person whose name escapes me at the moment uh, called Approvals. And this is a neat idea that uh, what it does is it shows, you show it, in your test you, you have it take a snapshot of how things work right now and then in future tests uh, the approvals framework will look at what you what your test does and how it compares to that snapshot and if they're different it will tell you. So that was a really neat idea. Unfortunately we had trouble making it work. Now since then Llewellyn has sent me a new, a new package that should solve the problems that we were having but I haven't gotten back to it yet.
So at this point you can see that I had given up on approvals and the next thing that I tried was to just look at the internals of Swing as, as it was running. Not so much the internals, but look at the uh, instantiate the table and, and see if it was working. The actual problem I was working on at this moment was trying to program the table to have alternating bars of color and in some of these spikes you'll see it go by. Um, one of the main application to have a white bar and then a light blue bar on each row of the table. So just simple polish like I said. And I was going to use approvals for that or going to try approvals for that. That didn't work out. And so right now what I'm programming is a little bit of code to test that programmatically uh, through Swing directly. One of the key ways I approached this is by creating a custom table class that was going to have these alternating rows. And that's actually something that stuck with the code, even into production code. Another thing that I tried was having a test bed uh, which would contain the table. This is a technique I've used in uh, other projects. It turned out that it wasn't going to be necessary in, uh, to test the swing, but it might be necessary in the future. But that J-frame you see there, that's a standalone frame just designed to to embed the table that I was testing. And the table, of course, is the code that uh, contains the alternating rows. And there you have it. I had working code to test whether or not a table had alternating colors, which was really fantastic. 
Now for the next several episodes, actually through episode uh, 53 I believe, or maybe 52, um, I was in Oslo, Sweden, or no, I was, uh, <laughs> sorry about that, I was in Malmo, Sweden at the URDIV conference working with Roy Oshrov, which was a real treat, um, having the chance to pair with somebody. Um, so we did five episodes together, and what we focused on was taking that spike code and translating it into production code. Now Roy hadn't been following the video series, and he hadn't worked with Java uh, for quite a while, so you're going to see more pauses in this part of the video, where uh, we had a lot of conversation about what was going on. Uh, we also had a lot of different perspectives on how to approach testing, most of which, unfortunately, we didn't get to express on the videos. But um, so there were a lot of conversations, and, and as a result, you'll see um, a fair amount of pausing. But the neat thing was, uh, after our five episodes, we completely solved this and got the code working in production, uh, which was pretty fantastic. So here you can see us just getting started on that effort, uh, just getting started on writing a test that will do uh, alternating rows on a table in production code. so often we had a real problem with the swing test hanging. We actually solved that, but not in this uh, set of episodes. But if you see the uh, activity monitor, Mac OS's activity monitor flashing up, that's what we're doing. We're killing the process. And that brings us to the end. Um, if you want to see more of this work with uh, Roy finishing up the alternating row table, or if you'd like to see other stuff, please come visit my website at jameshore.com slash blog slash let's play. Uh, thanks very much for watching, and I hope to see you in a future episode.